Hello, hi, welcome back to the channel. There once was a man named Jello Biafra. He sang for a band called Dead Kennedys. They put out a record in 1985 called Frankenchrist, and Tipper Gore lost her marbles, started an organization called the PMRC that was responsible for this parental advisory explicit content stamp that ended up going onto records that they thought were inappropriate for kids. So this organization got together to be like, hey parents, do you understand what your kids are listening to? These artists are providing awful content and the men behind it should be sued. So that's right, Jello Biafra, this lovely gentleman right here, he was being sued because he was exposing minors to damaging content, okay? But before that trial could take place, Oprah had Tipper Gore, amongst other people, come on to her show with Jello Biafra to discuss their points and to have a little debate and discussion about the top. This is one of those stories you hear growing up going to shows, but it's never a clip that I've actually seen. So I thought it would be fun to throw on some Oprah and to watch this legendary clip of Jello Biafra put on a suit, act like a regular human being, and go on this television program with Tipper Gore. Now I know there's probably more historical context I could probably give to this thing, like who Tipper Gore is and what her political agenda was, if she was like liberal or right wing, but I think we'll let the clips speak for themselves. So let's go, it's gonna be me and you and Oprah. All right, let's go. So we're talking about how music and the lyrics affect uh, teenagers. You wanted to say what? Yeah, teenagers, how oh, are you affected? I just wanted to say, Oprah, that uh, I'm a music industry attorney, and uh, oh, yeah, we got a the lawyer. one question that I have for David and for Tipper is, why are you talking, why do so many people talk in terms mm -hmm. of the fact that 13 teenagers were affected by suicide things that okay. our children are affected. What about society? Are you saying to us that society as a whole must be governed by the minority and the influence on the minority? Because that's what it seems oh, to say. Oh, that's a great and point. And I have a feeling that the rest of us adults who can fully take that lyric and not commit suicide as a result of hearing <laughs> it have just as much a right to enjoy it and listen to it yeah. for what purpose it was meant for as we have to worry about 13 teenagers may be going to commit suicide about it. What, where, where does the proportion come in? Isn't it your yeah, responsibility yeah. as parents to protect Simple your math. teenagers and let Simple society parenting. amalgamate the, the, the material that's the, that's based uh, basis for the majority. He's basically saying like, why are you going so crazy when you got a couple people committing the old S word out there, okay? That shouldn't be something that you're too worried about because the general population can listen to the dumb song, we can process that dumb lyric, and we don't go crazy, okay? Our kids are fine. In the best of all possible worlds, that would be true, but we are not in the best of all possible worlds. I uh, children fucking hate that response in a debate. Okay, what you're saying is great in an ideal world, but we don't live in an ideal world. Yeah, but it's in your power to do the thing to make the world more ideal. You can not do the thing, and we can make the world a little bit more ideal. You can't just be, that's a fucking scapegoat of a fucking answer. Well, the world sucks, so I'm doing a sucky thing. Fuck you. There's much more divorce, there's much more family disruption today. <laughs> there's a lot of bad stuff happening, so we're just adding to the pile. There's nothing wrong with that. Children are more vulnerable. Just look at the statistics. Children They're not for 20 per yeah, Look at the statistics, okay? We got vulnerable kids getting bullied. And now we're adults, and we, we want to bully too. It's not fair that kids get to do all the bullying. So now we're grown up, and we gotta be bureaucratic about how we go about our bullying. Fuck this guy. Percent of the population, the, we're going let's, to let's, censor let's 80 percent. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, exactly. In 1960, 10 percent of our teenage girls were sexually active. 50 percent is. <laughs> What's his point? Uh, this is this is not going. To to go well. Okay, so people were like, they had less sex back in the day when things were, you know, more PG. And now things are wild and sex is happening all over the place. What are the teenagers doing with their fucking genitalia out there? Sexually active today. Of girls who are 14 years old. in those days were not accurate and you know that that's been changed. Who, 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 how many well, people in that, e in those eras were admitting that they were sexually active well, where society is much more open? Yeah, exactly. Back then it was like, oh no, sex. 
sex? Never heard of it. <laughs> Meanwhile, they're fucking doing all the sex with all the people. Look at Darby. They were just we sexually active. Well, uh, what we're seeing is that with AIDS, they're probably less sexually uh, active now. Wait a minute. Yeah, come on. You, you guys were alive back then. You know how much fucking was going oh, on. Man. All you people were raised yeah. in the 50s, they just didn't tell. Oh. That, yeah, yeah, Oprah knows. <laughs> Where's Jello? No, okay. Back in the okay. 50s, what about Patches by Dickie yeah. Lee or all these other I, two I jerkers the here? Yeah, hey, oh, Jello the chiming of in, censorship thank God. Because we do not advocate nope. censorship. We're not, David isn't, I do not advocate it in my book. I am talking about pervasive messages that are available to kids of any age that are explicit and vile. What did the, I, I miss what they, uh, they labeled her as? Tipper Talking Gore. Talking about pervasive meth. Tipper Gore. Raising PG kids in an X-rated society. This is great, man. We're going back fucking 35 years, okay? And this fucking clip is just as, like, historically relevant now as it was back then. But I don't know who really, like, the PMRC of today is other than just, like, the Twitter mob. The Twitter mob is out there trying to cancel everybody. Meanwhile, Tipper Gore was just out there as a one woman canceling wrecking ball back then. Imagine what she could have done with Twitter if she had that as a resource. Explicit and violent and parents have a right to know that. Parents in this country right now aren't tuned in. They, they're they not aware of what their kids are seeing on television and listening to and they really- It doesn't look like she's on Twitter. But there was a tweet about her 23 hours ago by Danny Boy O'Connor that says, here's how they used to try and ban records they didn't want us to hear back in the 80s. Brought to you by Al Gore's wife and the PMRC co-founder, Mary Tipper Gore. Whoa, I didn't know Tipper wasn't that her actual real name. Shows you how much history I fucking know. All because her daughter liked Darling Nikki by Prince. Oh, Prince is the real culprit behind this. Why does Jello have to go to court over this crap? This label only made us want to buy the records even more. And they're talking about the parental advisory label. Yeah, true say. Uh, Danny Boy O'Connor. Let's keep going, Tipper. We need to so that they can nurture their child and protect their child. <laughs> We're just here to give the parents the right information so they can nurture correctly. We hate incorrect nurturing out here. It's education for parents. Nobody, <laughs> and we want to make. We it's create, education for parents. For yes, boy. In the marketplace. Like you care about education. Time. If it was education for parents, you'd be like, okay, parents, this is all you got to do, okay? If your kids bring home something that you don't like, all you got to do is tell them why it's not chill, okay? You just got to sit them down and talk to them like a human being. If you treat your kid like a human being from the time they're a little human being all the way until the time that they're a big human being, they might be able to make rational decisions as an adult. Tipper Gore, going to slap a fucking label on a record as if it's not going to make us want to buy the fucking thing even more. What an idiot. I think it's damaging. I think it's damaging both to a parent and to a kid to twist the uh, lyrics of a Metallica song like that out of context to try and tell a parent what that song is about when that may not be what the song is about as o at all. Yeah. That music was too... <laughs> like blank stare she's giving him. Okay, yeah, <laughs> like... Man, Tipper Gore, when she's hearing a valid argument, she just looks like she's looking at the most stupid person in the world. Like, how can you be saying such a dumb, ridiculous thing, Mr. Punk Rock Man? Melancholy to my ears to make me feel, hey, man, suicide's really cool. That sounds like a good idea. I know But the fact of the matter the is, if you are, let me that. just stop you here, if you are contemplating... <laughs> Oprah, let the man talk. All right, I, 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 shut the fuck up, dude. <laughs> let me talk. I'm Oprah. Plating suicide, you're melancholy. Anyway, the same way if you're in love and you listen to Luther Vandross say, you are my love, you are my lady, it makes, it, it sort of adds to that feeling. And if you are feeling melancholy, you hear a song that says, I want to end it, set me free, then that, that, that helps to. But it takes a real. Oh, are you really trying to make that argument, Oprah? Like, if you're already feeling this way, and then you hear somebody say, hey, I also feel this way, it's gonna magnify it into something negative? No, from my experience, when you hear somebody say, hey, yo, I'm really sad, well, you're really sad, the thought that you're gonna have is like, oh shit, I'm not alone. Someone else is doing the thing that is also representative of how I feel. This is really sick. Let me tweet at them and thank them for making this awesome song. Chicken parent. 
It, sometimes it does go the other way, but like we were going over earlier, you can't fucking regulate 100% uh, uh, of the population because of some, like 5% of what goes on. Blame the suicide of their child oh, on a song. musician. Oh, <laughs> I mean, you say what? Yeah, yeah it's I mean, absolutely we're ridiculous. A, uh, interdependent socially, all of us. Now, I have six children, and I can't... <laughs> <laughs> this lady has six children. That means she was like cranking kids out way back in the 40s. She's, she's having just as much sex as anyone else out here. I cannot read the lyrics to every song. I can't read. I bet she's a Satanist. Read every book my children read. So I have to depend on other parents and networking to get the information. I do the work. Oh my God. If your fucking kid is reading a thing, maybe peruse it. Maybe Google it. Oh, I guess you couldn't have Googled it back then. But you could have like, you know, sourced out the information about the thing. If not just like reading or listening to the thing your goddamn self. And then making your own judgment about it. Uh, uh, why are you going to tip or go? I need a kids. system, oh, and I do talk uh, and listen, more important than talking to my kids. I listen. But uh, you should do some talking. You, you have like 30 years of experience on them in this game called life. You should sit them down and be like, listen, kid, I got some knowledge for you, dumbass. Don't listen to your stupid kids. Kids are dumb. But I, I need the help that uh, the system would give me to evaluate. <laughs> I need the comfort blanket of the system. The system is like a warm fucking big old hug that wraps its arms around me at night time, that lets me go to sleep at night. I love you system, kiss kiss, good night. What is coming into him? We can't deny that the media message is very important. Otherwise, we're wasting tremendous sums of money educating kids in schools. Uh, I don't even give a shit. Oh, I do love those frames, though. Yeah, pretty sick frames. If you hadn't noticed, I, I recently picked up a new pair myself. I was going to go with a pair like this, but I'm glad I didn't. She's kind of ruined the look for me. Okay. If books and music and everything have no effect on children, we better close our schools. Okay, you say what, Bob? <laughs> It's more than the... Uh, do I really need to argue with this fucking idiot right now? It's more than the media in the schools. It's the mentorship, okay? It's the socialized thing that happens in the school. There's more to education than just the books and just the resources. If you give an idiot kid just the resources, they're just gonna fucking glue them together and try to make a fucking Lego fort out of them. They need to go to school so they can learn the structure and put the knowledge to use. You're, what am I doing? I'm arguing with a fucking clip that is almost as old as I am. Uh, we're looking at the whole problem from the wrong end of the telescope. We're saying we've got some social problems in our world today. That's obvious. And we're saying that... Uh, social problems, even in the 80s? Wow. It's so much the same back then as it is right now. Uh, whoop, maybe whoop, it's whoop. music that creates the problem, so we're concentrating on music. Instead of concentrating on the... Bob Guccione Jr. Editor of Spin Magazine. Yeah, that's what a fucking editor looks like, man. Spin Magazine. He's trying to look so fucking hip with his hair all teased out like that. Got the poofy bangs going. He's got the shirt unbuttoned. Looking pretty good for Spin Magazine. I like how it's in quotations. Uh, editor for Spin Magazine, if it's really a fucking publication. Real social dilemmas. We have the highest rate of illiteracy this country's ever known. We have the most crippling drug problem this country's ever known. That is not the fault of a few rock and roll songs or a few of anything, a few plays by Shakespeare or TV shows. Fucking Shakespeare. Yeah, why aren't we raging against Shakespeare? Uh, I have more truck with the TV shows that pretend it's a uh, Cosby world and everything's okay once uh, mum and daughter... Uh, don't break uh, Cosby's more evil than any of that. Don't let, let's not derail ourselves and go off on a Cosby tangent, Mr. Spin Magazine. Kiss and make up. That's my problem. Don't tell Cosby to kiss and make. He has real. No, uh, uh, okay, I can't. No, you know, I, I, we're not I, going I, down I, the Cosby I, 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 road. I was heartbroken when I found that wasn't true. By the time I got into high school. Yeah, don't blame like, Cosby. Though blame Beaver for goodness <laughs> sakes. <laughs> You know, saying something isn't censorship, unfortunately, doesn't make it not censorship. In the same way that if you run somebody over in your car, it doesn't cease to be vehicular homicide because you didn't mean to. Unfortunately, and I think you're... Well, it, it turns it into a different thing. It's, you, don't, you know, if it's premeditated or if it's like manslaughter, I don't know if this guy's making an argument that 
is something that can go through rational brain and make sense. A very charming and very lovely lady, and I believe you're very well intentioned. And I want to, uh, like, he's against Tipper Gore, so I obviously want to be on his side, but he's kind of a fucking idiot. But I think that what you're doing is potentially very, very dangerous. I don't think anybody is enough of a surgeon that they can precisely cut off that which is dangerous to society and protect everything that, uh... Ooh, that's Nazi behavior. I don't know if you know that, Tipper Gore, but that's kind of how the Nazis thought. They were like, let's just get rid of this, and then we'll have a nice little world. <laughs> potentially make society grow. I think you're very glib, and I think you're glossing over very, very, very serious issues. <laughs> We're, there's, a so, there's a social problem which is, which is reflected. Obviously, the music is one part of a larger social problem. But to say it's, it's you know, just a little part of it, it's a large, large part of it. I don't think and it's a large part. Well, oh, well, I disagree. I think it's a, it is reflects, well, I, I think, our attitudes as adults that we're really not as caring for children as we should be, and we're not uh, protecting kids to the extent that they should be. Then, then, oh my God, then that's to the individual person to take better care of their kid. You can't be like, you're being a bad parent, so I'm going to step in and give you a service uh, to, to now give to your mate you're creating even worse parents fuck off protected we've always protected kids we're not protecting them today and I'm not saying it's just music it's all sorts of things it reflects a general attitude well I the well-intentioned lovely lady wants to speak yes, I, I, I the well-intentioned lovely lady I hope that wasn't in reference to Tipper Gore say once and for all that to talk about the content oh God, of all was. the media and i agree if kids see 18,000 murders on well intentioned i don't think so lovely not even close tv by the time they graduate high school we ought to know but to alert parents about the change in content is not censorship that's information and we're a consumer society we need it back in a moment nah. that's that's censorship my lady i want to we're going to listen to now some uh to some lyrics by the beastie boys the Beastie, the Beastie Boys, the most controversial group of all time. Uh, I, okay, I gotta throw a trigger warning, a parental advisory. I don't know, I, this is rated X, this is rated NC-17. Uh, if you're under the age of fucking 21 right now, then I don't know if you should be watching this next clip. This is gonna have Beastie Boy lyrics in it. Spicy, let's go. Okay, they're gonna actually play the song, so I'm just gonna have to read the lyrics here. And I, I, I can't believe this filth is gonna fucking come out of my mouth. I don't want to get copyright stricken here, so here we go. One, two, three, four. Head popping, body rocking, doing the do, beer drinking, breath stinking, sniffing glue, girly feeling, always ill and boss cats. My name is Mike D and I write my own stats. I'm a peep show seeking on the 40 deuce. I'm a killer at large and I'm on the loose. Pistol packing, money drinking, no money brawls. I come from Brooklyn cause that's where I'm from. Cheap talking, perpetrating, money hungry jerks. Every day I dig OE and I don't go to work you dippy no sucker head you're wet behind the ears he like men and we like beer hold it now hit it oh my god it's so blurry I can't make it out oh my god that was so filthy <laughs> I wonder if this no. is just a serious okay. generation gap we're going through yeah. uh, some of those other lyrics say I'll take no slack cuz I got the knack I'm never dusting out cuz I trust that crack you wanted to say what I wanted you to talk to about, what? this is an example of the change in content and why parents and other people are, cons are concerned. In their concert, they not only make references to oral sex, invite the young kids, they're admittedly, they've got... Thirteen year old girls basically as their fans to come onto the stage and have oral sex with their <laughs> They're not invited. Where are you getting that? That's crazy. If people are invited, you can't just because you're a you can't be out there doing pedophilic acts on stage. What are you talking about? They have a 20 foot inflatable <laughs> penis and they have a woman dancing in a cage and they take her top off and go over and put their mouths on her breast. This is in their concert act. There have been news stories about this. Yeah, but she's not for 14. <laughs> around the country because people in the communities had no... Oh, man, yeah, that big inflatable cock is really sick, though. You gotta fucking seek out some footage of that thing. ...for a warning, and they were taking their 9 and 10, 11-year-old kids to this concert. They're not the only ones. Man, I wonder if Tip Rigor's ever watched uh, Critical's channel. I wonder what she'd have to say about his collection of Moby Huges. I hear they come out and they say, how the four-letter word are you? Yes. Gang. How the four-letter word are you? 
Yeah. Of course, a lot of profanity, a lot of references to sexuality, inviting the young kid, inviting the teenage you girls in the audience to bear their breasts. Someone says, <laughs> I mean, what are you going to do? See, now, the reason I said four-letter word is because you're not supposed to say it on TV. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What, what, I mean, saying that, what, what's that going to do? I mean, I, I, like, you make it sound like... like okay, anyone with a mullet like that, uh, I... I just have the biggest love hearts in my eyes for, okay? I'm just like, yes, Mr. Mullet Man, whatever you say is going to be the truth right now. I don't care if it's the stupidest thing. You have the most gorgeous haircut I've ever seen. That's like a big deal, I mean, but, I mean, I don't understand, like, this phone. Like, sometimes, and people, like, put, like, types of music, like, they immediately associate with the bad lyrics and stuff, you know? But oh, I don't know if he can actually speak. He might be a moron. When you're buying a record, you're buying it for the music. I mean, like, just it happens that the stuff I listen to has, like, gloomy, doomy lyrics. But, I mean, if Lionel Richie puts a song about, a, about necrophilia, I'm not going to go buy his record. Just, I mean... <laughs> you know, the, but, the, but enough... What? Did he even make a point? Nine-year-old in the audience watching the Beastie Boys uh, have a sex act with a... <laughs> Watch the Beastie Boys have a sex act. Oh my god. <laughs> different girl is amazing. The girl is very well, different. On the Beastie Boys, first of all, you'll be glad to know that in Washington, they're coming to play in Washington, and they have promised to take a lot of that out. And it was. Yeah, okay, well, you know, they, they, they're willing to negotiate. If you don't want the big dick, they won't bring the big dick with them, okay? Tipper Gore. Community press. They're adults, they're reasonable, they're open to conversations. They're not unwieldy. Sure. Which is and I great. think, that, and I think, and I agree with you on that point, that, you know, informed parents, informed communities can say, you know, we draw the line. On the other hand, I know you also... Pat Hirsch, journalist. Pretty have vague. Some, some difficulty with the Beastie Boy lyrics. I think sometimes you have to look at the gestalt of a song. I mean, the Beastie Boys are an outrageous act. I mean, I don't think that any kid in America. <laughs> an out man. The '80s was a wild time because when, when I found the Beastie Boys in the '90s, when I was like, you know, getting introduced to music and stuff, they weren't really known as being like this really outrageous, pushing the boundaries type band. They were like on the charts. They were pushing, you know, their songs intergalactic and body moving like it was nothing that was like too crazy and then you learn oh my god they were a hardcore band and oh my god they w w turned into a hip-hop group with a big inflatable penis Th and then they ju they're just like the, one of the coolest bands that ever existed really looks at them and listens to what they're saying and says you know writes it down and says i'm going to do what they say they are a joke they, they intend to be a joke. The, 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 lyrics, the your lyrics flashed on the screen. Yeah, like, have you ever, like, se have you seen the Beastie Boys? Like, the way that they dressed back in the 80s with, like, the big fucking emblems and, and the way that they stood. It was a total joke to them, but they were also ill as fuck, and their records really fucking banged. So, yeah, they were kind of a joke, and they were kind of making fun of all the fucking stuff that was going on, but they also were fucking amazing were obviously social satire and I would interpret it as making yeah. fun of idiots who would use crack a lot of the language <laughs> is the same thing I would have seen in country western songs again if I just seen the words on a piece of paper I might have thought hmm could this be country could this be hard rock could this be the Beastie we can't Boys isolate. lead singer of the band the dead Kennedys all the tastelessness in society that's impossible and it's absolutely impossible society like the human body must live with a certain amount of bacteria it doesn't crumble up and die it doesn't turn to dust because there are a few ugly things in society or a few tasteless things the Beastie Boys is the most tasteless group in rock and roll by their own admission. That is their act. That is what they sell. Mm -hmm. you know? And how can and we confront that? They're tasteless that? and proud of it, yes. A absolutely. Yes. How absolutely. can we confront that the if they were censored like CBS did to them with the very album that that song is off of, bowing to... Let's just take a moment to appreciate the socks that Jello's got on there. Those are some beauts. Pressure from the uh, anti-rock and roll hate pressure group called the PMRC, co-founded by Mrs. Gore, Columbia Records asked the Beastie Boys to delete one song from that record and made them rewrite another. This is censorship. Even if it's not what Mrs. Gore says she is advocating, that kind of pressure has uh, has had an effect on especially the bigger... 
Yeah, I mean, even if it wasn't exactly what Tipper Gore and her group was going after, the people putting out records know that that's a thing now in the world, and now that's influencing the way records are being made, and it's influencing the way the records are getting dropped and promoted by these fucking companies. And I don't know how she was, like, so blind and stupid about it. The companies who are starting to uh, try and make their people cut down. Yeah, the PMRC. Record, make a point. Yeah, record labeling uh, is, is the thin edge of the wedge. Any attempt to uh, restrict... A song here, a song there, lyrics there, MTV during this hour, whatever, is the thin edge of the wedge. Very quickly it becomes uh, political opinions and songs. And Tipper, you're selling your book today, and if we censor this man today, tomorrow somebody's going to censor yours or David's book or my magazine. Some, some of the that, songs, that, on, that the, no, some of the songs on the PMRC wanna, blacklist from Metallica are anti-war. I want to make, I wanna make, I wanna make the point. It's only a matter of... You have to talk one at a time, otherwise it gets hurt. Oh my God. Yeah, they're just, like, what the hell is going on? Oprah, you gotta step in here. You're losing fucking control of your show. Yeah. Yes. This is not an issue of censorship. This is an issue of pervasive So you don't want the songs with... removed from the uh, album? You don't want them to, and you don't want them to stop singing the songs? But, no, so why they have a right to do that. They, they have the a re right to sing. <laughs> They can do what they want, but we also have the right to be like, hey, what they're doing is awful, let's sue them real quick. In the song, they have a right to produce it, but if you take the Beastie Boys by their admission, it's 13-year-olds that are their fans. Parents have a right to understand, and the content is this explicit, <laughs> for 13-year-olds and younger kids. And that's important. Yeah, well, the parents do you have that back. responsibility. Okay. You're not every fucking parent in the world, Tipper Gore. And that wasn't what you were advocating for. Oprah, I'm a product of the 50s, and I did, and I didn't tell, and I learned about... <laughs> and I did, and I didn't tell. Exactly. Look at this fucking guy. <laughs> and I learned about life from Henry Miller's books that were smuggled in from Europe, and I certainly don't want Attorney General Meese or anybody else telling me or my kids what to do. And also on that... Goddamn right. Exactly. People are out here fucking, oh, I don't know, dude, like, oh, yeah, you can really fucking control the way that I consume my media and, and how I fucking... Disseminated onto my family, fucking Tipper Gore. Suicide. I wonder how many suicides in this country were caused by Oral Roberts' recent flirtation. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what any of that means, but I'm sure it was a great point. It gives all the adults the right, or anyone the right, to tell what we can and what we cannot hear or read. Isn't it in our constitutional rights that we have the freedom of speech, the freedom of press, freedom of press? press says more stuff than any records or anything says you know and you are con sorry what? um you're contradicting yourself you're saying you're not for censoring yet i read a whole article about you for censoring records and censoring this and censoring that and i don't understand uh, some of the things Preach. that you're saying about how can the pmrc say that uh get it out lady in the 60s is a broken cross i don't i'm sorry i don't understand that when you can look at me like that but it's right in a magazine and i will bring the magazine you don't believe everything you read in magazines <laughs> i can tell you for sure right but i, I oh my god uh, oh, I, mean, I, I hate that respond, like, way to discredit somebody hey, uh, hey, 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 hey. not for censorship i my book is about alerting parents to the change in content and pressuring for um ways to make choices in the marketplace oh, that's the face of someone how do you raise being swayed by an argument right there Fuck yeah. it's almost impossible to raise christian children in an x-rated <laughs> society <laughs> because we cannot be educated if we do i don't want to raise christian children okay i want to raise other kinds of children my kind of children motherfucker and i have the right to do that not know what is on the cassette i bought my daughter a cassette last year for christmas and a friend of mine saw it and she said, I can't believe you bought this for your daughter. I had no idea what the words were on it. Madam, is she seriously down? Why did you give it a little listen there first, lassie? You damaged your daughter? <laughs> I mean, what was the what question? The words were on it. Madam, is she seriously damaged your daughter? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, exactly. Yeah. Anything goes, anything goes, you can show anything, you can do anything today, is that what you're saying? Is that what you're saying? I am trying to raise her as a Christian, and it's very difficult to raise a Christian. What album was it? It was something, I think, by Madonna or Prince or one of those. And it was a... I can't believe you bought Madonna or Prince for your daughter. Do you have any idea what they represent? Do you know the kinds of filth that goes on on their records? Well, to be honest, Prince and Madonna 
were filthy in the 80s, and even by today's standards, they would be pretty raunchy, pretty filthy, out there with nothing but cone bras on, humping the stage and stuff. Yeah, that's pretty fucking risque stuff, even by today's standards. And if you're gonna be giving your kid that sort of stuff, that means you're okay with giving your kid that kind of stuff. And you sat them down being like, hey, this is just entertainment, you know, this is just like this person's expression. You know, they're just trying to make a record and entertain some people. None of this is really 100% real. Now, is that cool to you? still want to like listen to that thing I don't really like that thing but you can listen to that thing if you understand what it actually is I don't think that that's the conversation that this person is having because they just want to raise good Christian family it's really hard to have a Christian girl but well, she's not damaged but she's having a hard time becoming a good Christian girl Fuck you. stuffer in here you know I had complete I was so naive about it I actually didn't know and it's with the bombardment of the media the way it is it's very difficult to raise but I imagine she survived society. which is the point the evidence at the end of the day. No, it's not the point. The point is that the consumer ought to have information to base their decisions on right. according to their own value I need system a guide. and raise That's kids. Right. Theme. <laughs> I need a guide. You need to be like, Madonna, not good. Don't give Madonna to my kids. But if you want to give like fucking Neil Diamond. <laughs> American way. Uh, so this is interesting though. So if you're not going to listen to Prince or Madonna and so many of the other popular artists, what do you want the lyrics to say as parents? What do you want the lyrics to say? Zippity doo da day? <laughs> I mean, seriously, no. what, do you, what do you want the lyrics to say? You don't want a homogenous world. All you want is to be alerted when they do contain explicit sex and violence and brutality against women. Explicit and these are the things you need to be the beholder and I for one. And dance without all of the oh sex God. and the violence and the, the explicit explicitness that we have. Madam, plenty of, uh, plenty of albums are available that do that. And uh, they're, they're displayed in exactly and the same exactly way. But how do record. we know as parents which ones to buy And it's not children. just that. I mean, one of the things... Because, yeah, you, you, oh, how, how should we know which one to get for our kids? Things that I would like to offer all parents is that obviously, I mean, I wrangle with this issue as a professional, as a parent. <laughs> I wrangle with this issue. That's not something we say a lot in today's uh, lexicon. Uh, I wrangle with it. I'm going to bring that out. I'm going to start using that. I've been wrangling with an issue, guys. I mean, I was concerned Censorship that the music sucks. Michael was listening to going to hurt him. And I looked at the whole person. And he's harsh. okay. I mean, he's really okay. We talk and he's okay. But the, but the thing is, is that what I've tried to do is... Yeah, that mullet guy really hasn't said a lot. Neither is Joe... <laughs> neither is Joe <laughs> Biafra, to tell you the truth. Profane language. Yeah. Television uses yeah. profane language. And I would just suggest that the average child, apparently, statistics say, watches MTV if they have it in their home for an hour and a half a day. So one day I sat... Oh, an hour and a half of MTV a day. It sounds like a dream. For an hour and a half and watched it with Michael. How can you... How hey, wait a minute. Let me just finish. You're my son. Be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> That's You're beautiful. Mark, but you're right stupid. There. You're my son. Be yeah, quiet. Right you know, that I want, he makes the tapes to show me what I should watch. He makes tapes of videos. But the point is, is that oh I watch my fucking it for an hour and a half with he him. He really curates a great little playlist for me, I will say. And then we turned on the evening news, which all children watch. Little children all yeah. the way up. The Everybody liar, watches it? The news is the most popular show on the televisions. Kids I mean, do when they see in the president the head of the whole country and people call him a liar. I mean, they think so they're so the head of the whole country's lying and then they so how you compare that what's the difference between that and seeing uh, just a video i mean they're kind well, of the, 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 point the, the, the feeling that i got and that's why i say it's just a, it doesn't solve the problem <laughs> like, but it does give some perspective is oh that the my news God, this guy. was as crazy as mtv yeah and the news was real you know or less real. It's yes. Maybe. Well, maybe. But the news isn't a commercial enterprise aimed at kids. Oh, it is now. Absolutely. Yeah, it is. Yeah, the news isn't a commercial enterprise aimed at kids. What are you talking about? Everything is a commercial enterprise aimed at kids. Kids are the most vulnerable. Parents have the money. They fucking do the things to make the kids not scream at them. What are you talking about, you fucking idiot Tipper Gore? But, but everybody watches the news. Other, other everybody watches. I, mean, I don't want to focus Every on music because... Man, I, I don't know if I've ever lived in a world where everybody watches the news. So much is more important. Gather around the phonograph, everybody. We got the news happening. Television, movies, but in every other entertainment media, we have consumer information. There's a rating system for movies. We get programming information for TV. All people want to know where music is concerned is some information, the same kind that's available in the other entertainment media, so they can make decisions.
Tipper, you're, you're losing your mind. She's, look, I gotta stop you right here, Tipper. You're losing Today, your mind. About their younger children and your protect them falls down from on explicit sex yeah, and oh violence my in the media because right. young kids can't handle it. Your poster is so obscene that you can't even put it on television, but it's available to kids in, of any so age in the kids record can store. Make up their own minds, and people, parents of should you be able. Their minds. Parents yeah. should. We will be right back. Oh my God. Yes, Oprah. I'm so angry at that man from the Dick Kennedys. I can barely speak. <laughs> I tell you, Oprah, I am so mad at that man from the Dead Kennedys. He asked that woman, has it harmed her daughter? Well, I have a 14-year-old son. It harmed... Uh, that, that wasn't the Dead Kennedys guy that asked that question. That was the spin guy. I didn't pay attention when he was listening to the Dead Kennedys and the Beastie Boys, and I didn't know what the lyrics were until he started taking a knife to my husband, and he ran out in the middle of the street what? and threatened to kill me and himself. What? It was just Nothing in a mental hospital for what? 10 weeks, and then I am seeing a psychiatrist, he is seeing a psychiatrist three times a week, and so far it costs $40,000, and it's... Um, <laughs> Oprah, I'm losing my friggin' mind. I'm going to see counselors. I'm going to see therapists. I've lost my husband. I lost my kid. I lost my family. I lost my wallet. My car ran away from me even. I am losing my mind. I am going to check myself into an institution because of those Metallica lyrics that my son's been listening to. Music and listening to these lyrics, writing them down, and taking them to heart. I just <laughs> wanted to... I can just, I just. See, for whom the bell tolls, for whom the bell tolls, for whom the bell tolls, for whom the bell tolls. The journal he's keeping, where he's writing those lyrics down and keeping copies of the articles about the teenage suicide. And now I threw away all the music when he was in the hospital this morning. Oh I just them. found new tapes that he has bought and hidden in his room. I think that it is a travesty what they're doing to the teenagers today. Absolute I think travesty. they're their minds up and it's just for money. I want <laughs> them to just... come and live with my my son and live with the heartache that I feel for this child and then oh man imagine you used to have to go through all this effort to try to cancel someone and now you just gotta send out a couple tweets to get someone to fucking like it and retweet it but uh, back then you had to throw a couple thousand fucking dollars at it he could sit there and be so smug I went to bed at night before he went in the house not knowing if he was going to kill his brother and his parents <laughs> look at the look of concern on this woman's face <laughs> she can't believe what she's hearing. Oh, she has so much empathy for this caller calling into Oprah. I'd like him to live with that. Madam, I should try. Madam, you know, but, gosh, we hope your your son gets better. But let me just ask you this. Clearly. Do you think it, do you honestly in your heart believe it was the music or were there other things troubling your son and the music sort of added to that? Great question, Oprah. Let's see how she answers. Okay, there may have been some things, but... <laughs> there may have been and some like, things. <laughs> we may have abused him a little bit, you know. We whipped him as a child. <laughs> what has told me mm -hmm. that it is the music. I'm listening to an expert. It's not just my own opinion. I am listening. <laughs> to an expert who told me it was the music, okay? They understand the subliminal messaging behind those recordings. Like, did you ever listen to those Abbey Road recordings? They fucking made people do such crazy shit, and it's fucking the 80s now, so how can you even process the kind of fucking crazy shit, the satanic imagery, and the fucking Satan worshipping they're putting into the music? Okay, so it's such an expert, why is he copping out and blaming it on bands. I mean, what is it about the way this person was raised that would make him want to do this to you? I agree, it's very tragic. Yeah, exactly. This person was raised by two loving parents in a very stable home. Very stable. It was <laughs> very stable. <laughs> she has like Donald Trump's speech pattern. Very stable. Very stable. And I let this step into his life, into his room. Maybe that was where I fell down as a parent because I allowed that into his room. I didn't think it was any more damaging than the music I listened to. <laughs> Another wonderful face of concern we see before us. Can't believe what she's hearing. To in the 60s. I was wrong. 
that if you listen to that, it's just like being the way they used to take things and put it. They listen to it in their ears. They, they read the lyrics. They listen and to they it in their ear, the and they go out and try to kill their parents. It's just what happens. It's total sensory flooding of their minds with it, and it did affect his mind. Oh, my God, this guy's well. thinking about killing his whole family they now. They don't go and try to kill their parents. I mean, you got to take the majority of the people. If you have a drop in the bucket... That kid maybe should see a psychiatrist or whatever three yeah. times a week. But heavy I mean, metal I music fan. Millions of people calling up and complaining about their kids doing that. I mean, you got to take. Oh, it's finally coming together. I don't know why they didn't give a nameplate for him before, but he is the the son of the journalist that he's sitting beside. The majority. And he's a heavy metal fan, as you can tell by that sick haircut. Judging me or any other rock artist by the actions of one mixed up kid is as narrow-minded as judging all born-again Christians by Mark Chapman, the guy who shot John. Lennon. Right. It just isn't accurate. Yeah, you well, know, Charles I, we have to agree. I really hope that we start having these kinds of discussions about what's going on in the modern age of like canceling people. And there's clearly some people that should be outright canceled and also like arrested and put into jail for what they've done. You know, there are like the Harvey Weinsteins and the Bill Cosbys of the fucking world, you know? But I mean, there should be some level of like respect to everybody allowed to say what they want to be able to say, you know? Charles Manson took uh, Thank you, caller. Helter Skelter as his inspiration to slaughter the Sharon Tate and her family. However, every other murderer in the last 22 years hasn't taken the Beatles as an inspiration. I mean, there are always going to be isolated fanatics, isolated lunatics, and terrible acts like Chapman. Okay, I listen to the Dead Kennedys, and I love them a lot. And there's this one song, Kill the Poor, that everyone, I mean, if my dad listened to it... Kill the Poor. Right. Okay, <laughs> if my dad listened to it, he'd be like, you know, wait, what is, what is this saying? You know, but I, what it's about, it's about like Ronald Reagan and other people that are, that are spending money for missiles or building other things instead of helping the poor. It's, it's sarcasm. It's, I mean, that's it what I'm It was written before from. Reagan took office when the Carter administration oh, was sorry. pushing the neutron what bomb. I'm getting, what I'm and getting the neutron from. bomb blows people up but leaves the property intact, which unfortunately is a crafty way for corporations to get rid of slums in this country and build more holiday inns. Yeah. That's what that song is warning about. Um, I know that when my yeah. mom was a kid, many people didn't like <laughs> Elvis Presley because they hey, I'm a real big fan of your work and I just, I guess I don't understand it that well. But but she had the right idea, vulgar. but like, I mean, just, that's the same you know, thing that's going on now. Place. He wasn't banned from the stage and I listen to it sometimes and I I'm fine. I there's nothing wrong with me. Exactly. The content really has changed. I mean, uh, his poster is too graphic to put on TV. There's sex and violence. It's very I don't know if you guys know, but as a teenager, I listen to corn. Oh my god. And now I wear kilts. <laughs> Much more graphic. I mean, you have somebody with a chainsaw, uh, saw blade between their legs. Uh, they're making music. They're That's on the stage. It's very, poster. very That's different. I know. It's not yours. No, it's another group, which is a good example. There's a proliferation of these groups, and, and a chainsaw between your uh, legs is different than Elvis Cut Presley her off. swinging uh, hips. Go to commercial. Very, very different. Sell me a 1986 Wendy's patty over listening to Tipper Gore. Jesus fucking Christ. Let's go. With Elvis, because when Elvis started to shake in his behind and people said, oh my God, it's sinful, oh my, you're going to hell and so forth, isn't perhaps maybe uh, his poster now that shows penises entering vaginas an extension of <laughs> Elvis? What? Everybody says that's what the poster is. It's a surrealist painting. Even one psychologist... I, saw it. I thought it was a penis entering a vagina. <laughs> You have a right to do that. Okay, Even one right, psychologist right. said, oh, this is, uh, this looks like a you, garden. Does it not look like a <laughs> penis in a <laughs> yeah, to you? <laughs> the orifice is open to Someone questions. Someone fucking sample that. That will fucking All right. slap That's in a trap is. banger in today's day and age. Penis entering vagina. Museum of modern Penis entering vagina. Censorship. Penis entering vagina. Oh, Tipper, that, that hung in the Vienna Museum of Modern Art. You can guide it in the public the library is considered one of the 20th foremost. century masters of art. Yeah. The point so, is not to argue over the merits of art. The point is that this was available to kids of any age and people didn't have any notification in the market. So are you saying if we label, it, label the album, you know there's a poster inside that has... A, uh, <laughs> 
a poster. A what? Yeah, what? Oprah. But it, once it you out. label it, does it mean that he can yeah. Spike can still go into the store and buy it? He can still buy it. Unbelievable. No, it doesn't. Our record sales have not gone up like that after this was publicized. It was a chill factor, especially with chain stores. This is Some chain example. stores are okay. even saying that they will not allow, they will not carry any record that has a PMRC sanctioned parents warning sticker. That is censorship. Absolutely. PMRC yeah. literature calls for the quote reassessment of contracts. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, like, you yeah. you things. seem That's frustrated. I am because we're talking. This is just one thing. I mean, the uh, main stop, Jello. Jello, shut the fuck up. She, she, our queen seems frustrated right now, and we must listen to her. So shut the fuck up. Tipper's gonna speak now. Shut up, Jello. Major point is to how the content Tipper? has changed and how people need to be able to make up their own mind about it. Okay, you say. I would just like to know what the big deal. <laughs> One person. Yeah, Tipper. Yeah, fuck yeah. The deal about all this is we watch soap operas every day and the teenagers have the video records on. It doesn't say in the TV guide that Erica Kane's going to be in bed today for a whole sex scene. <laughs> Children keep their. The Did you see Nina and Cliff when they got back together? <laughs> Yeah, that's a fair. I didn't even really think of that, man. Like just like middle of the day soap operas. Fucking Cliff is out there banging Nancy, and it's like, hey, you know, there's gonna be some fucking sex on television. Fucking 2 p.m. <laughs> all, the, all the kids in high school have these machines on. They come home afterwards. What's wrong with that? Why isn't it in the TV guide? What's it's wrong not with the music? There's something wrong with you it. You can't censor that. No, I'm not trying Agreed. to censor it. I'm not saying that there should be information I'm in the trying market. to get I'm other. It, it, but you gotta see the process of censoring that's happening. You say, this thing is bad, then the companies that sell the thing goes, we don't sell the things that this organization says is bad. So as soon as this fucking idiot goes, your thing is bad, you're fucking blacklisted, and oh, see you later, sales. Wait, People on Tipper's behalf, for is it, I disagree with Tipper on, on labels, but I agree with her that parents should have more information, and there's no big deal. Get the lyrics in the stores so right. that people can look at them. Not, not any kind of judgment. If a parent is really concerned, they can go, they can see what's on an album. I suggested yeah, in I Billboard know. that yeah, they have the lyrics yeah, available. Create different kinds kind of resources. Same way a restaurant album has its food booklets license. with and it's a, lyrics it's and pictures. And I think that if somebody should say, I'd like to see the lyrics, please, and they take you to part of the store and they show you the lyrics. No one's got a problem with that. Uh, uh, yeah, no, exactly. No one's got a problem with that. Song books, and they're going to lose an awful lot of royalties given them away for free. Take them away. We do. Them away. We put them with our records. I suggest you don't take the lyrics away. You read them on the spot and decide by the album or not. Caller? Uh, Caller? Speak up. Uh, yep. Yeah. Um, your show's great. Okay. I no, Phil. Who do you think you're calling? <laughs> thank you very I much. Go, thank you. I, I appreciate the comment. Yes. Hello? Yes, you're on. Yes, I wanted to what? share with How is this on television? You can't be calling Oprah like this. I have a six and a half year old that watched Howard the Duck. Two days oh my god, not Howard the Duck. That shit's my fucking raunchy, dude. That fucking evening, shit's gonna kill a fucking motherfucker. My son turns around and tells his cousin that's four years old, oh yeah, I had a girlfriend and uh, we were laying in bed and I kissed her. Now this, I could have just oh my god. fell to my knees. <laughs> I mean, we do not do anything bad in this house and I'm always with my kids. We, oh, we do not do anything bad in this house. Like, I... We thought of a bad thing once, but that was as close as we got. Now I have a two and a half year old son. A two and a half year old? Month, we They're so vulnerable. Sylvester Stallone, and it stayed with him. It, uh, a couple of times it would say, uh, um, one of the guys would say, you're going to die. Well, my two and a half year old is going around the house now saying, you're going to die. You're going to die. It does have an effect on the kids. Then have now, a fucking discussion Mike, with him, Michael, you dumb idiot. He's sitting there and he's you brain that dead piece of shit. The songs How do you okay. have kids There's to begin with? with They're not okay. There's so many drugs, children with drug addict problems. <laughs> you cut it up with the and music. You got some saxophone happening. You know, pretty chill. Pretty banging. Let's go. <laughs> Thank you, caller. We're, yeah. we're out of time. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> Well, what a waste of fucking time that was, I'll tell you what. Uh, Oprah, I have ten children, so... Ten, ten children, right. this so fucking I've had a lot of different experiences sucks. with this, and I know that children react very differently <gasps> to what goes on. So that's one of the tricky parts. Some kids take it in very quietly. Some of them tell you everything they've seen. You know about it, you can talk to them about it. What I really feel I need, though, is the help of ratings. Just like other products through the whole market have ratings on them, if there's a rating, it helps me make a but judgment. But so what you it. need is not for the good of the majority of people, and it starts a but system you know that's good for the majority. It starts. Of people? <laughs> yeah. It starts. Yeah. And how does? <laughs>
The majority of the people are with me. The majority of the people don't want censorship. The majority of the people do not want censorship. Yeah, the majority of the people don't want censorship. Yeah, the majority of the people don't want censorship. Yeah, the majority of the people don't want censorship. Yeah, the majority of the people don't want censorship. Yeah, the majority of the people don't want censorship. Yeah, the majority of the people don't want censorship. Yeah, the majority of the people don't want censorship. Yeah, the majority of the people don't want censorship. Yeah, the majority of the people don't want censorship. Yeah, the majority of the people don't want censorship. Yeah, the majority of the people don't want censorship. Yeah, the majority of the people don't want censorship. Yeah, the majority of the people don't want censorship. Yeah, the majority of the people don't want censorship. Yeah, the majority of the people don't What you're doing you know starts a process <laughs> which eliminates first a Jello Biafra and a small independent label. Then it eliminates another guy, Beastie Boys, or it eliminates a rock and roll magazine. Finally, it starts a, a board that regulates what goes on a cover of Time and Newsweek. The or what they're using is exactly. Man, that guy does so much fucking coke in bathrooms. Right. <laughs> so thin edge of a wedge. I'm sorry you need weddings. That's and a shame. They say it's okay. Let me it's put out the poor quality product. It's too dangerous for the rest of this country. This country was founded so on freedom of expression, freedom of press, bro. freedom of religion. The real Don't issue here. Yeah, every, freedom of all those goddamn things. To be able to put a rating out. Why can't every every child child what, what, can see What's not free about being able to put a label on it, Bob? It's how it sets the restrictions for the label. Let me tell you, the last person who put a label on something was Hitler, who put a little star on Jews. That was just a little <laughs> <label> <laughs> Yeah, I, I made the fucking Nazi analogy at the beginning of the video, and here we got the spin guy making a Nazi analogy at the end of the video. Tipper Gore is just Hitler in a skirt, bro. Uh. Yeah, that's how it starts. Let me ask you this, Bob. A society in panic. Bob, how does labeling labeling albums differ from labeling movies? It, it, because I'm not going to that. Because it, an album res, lies on its display itself. A movie is behind a movie theater, whereas a, a Howard the Duck or its Cobra, it's behind the same door. You know what you get when you walk through that door. A record that is displayed under a counter is not available for sale, effectively. That's what's happened to his record. That's why it's dropped. And other records that will be censored will drop out of sight until finally they go for you too for making a political record, and they'll drop out of sight, and they'll all drop out of sight. Goddamn right. Ratings on movies, you look at them. If you just take a straight rating and go by it, you're in trouble. If you read what the content is, then you can make a judgment. Right. I'm Lyrics, hoping the ratings will tell us something it. about what's there. Back in a moment. I just wanted to say that. Uh, oh my God, the mustache uh, I think of this guy. Both sides should definitely show some responsibility. Parents, if they're tuned out. Maybe you should step back and say, "Hey, what's really going on here?" Yeah, uh, that's a, that's a fair point. If they're tuned out, tune back in. You had some fucking children. You got like an 18-year responsibility now. I don't know if you know that, but you've had a child, so act like it. Number two, on the half of the production end of this, uh, we should avoid a knee-jerk response, uh, saying, "Oh." I'm getting real defensive now, and I'm not doing this, and they aren't re responding in this reaction. David, yeah, I think um, you know nobody is saying that this music makes kids commit suicide or do anything else. It's part of a larger picture. But what I do say is, does anything go? Are there no limits? Aren't there any? You know, Freud never said that repression was bad. He said too much repression was bad, and a certain amount of repression is healthy for a society. You can't have a society without repression. So you have. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Imagine being the kind of guy to go on national television to argue in favor of repression. <laughs> what kind of fucking idiot, moronic, evil piece of shit do you gotta be to be like, you know, repression is actually pretty sick. Anything go? Where are the limits? And if we say, look, there are boundaries beyond which you don't go. That's healthy for kids. It's not. You don't and then to have a fucking yes, we. We're in America. We don't want to. I don't think. We believe in freedom of speech if there's speech in the thing I believe. If there's speech in something that I think is fucked, then yeah, that should be fucking eradicated forever. Fuck them. Cancel Jello be offer forever. I don't think Mrs. Gore or anybody is so cool they can tell everybody else how to interpret a record, especially when the PMRC to. won't even tell us who their financial backers yeah. are. Let Mrs. Who Gore backs you, Jimmy? I, 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 who backs you, Tipper? You're getting Nazi money, aren't you, you fucking idiot? Violence in all the media, the fact that there's more violence against women on television at a time when younger children are watching than ever before, is something parents ought to be concerned about. How to raise PG kids. But not to let other people... How to raise PG kids is the next rate of society. People use it as a hit for a hit, as for a hidden agenda of censorship. How to raise PG kids in an X-rated society. Okay, that's so much. We just watched some Oprah. I found that to be a little bit of fun. If you found that to be a little bit of fun, throw a like on it. If you didn't like it, throw a dislike on it. Until my next upload, watch another upload.